the hit was so hard it just flew some meters away and rolled onto the asphalt and this was completely shattered on my uh, wrist bones because that's what they use against the protesters there. War tanks. You have to live in that regime just to understand. Lietuvių kilmės Venesuelėta buvęs modelis Žvilė Rodrigas su dukra į Lietuvą pabėgo iš komunistinio režimo iš humanitarinės krizės. Moterys paliko Venesuelą, kada įsia buvusi rojus kampelį žemėje po to, kuomet valdžia su protestuotojais pradėjo kovoti tankais. Jie tiesiog pervažiuodavo žmonės vidurį aikštės. Žvilė buvo viena pirmųjų aukų. Uh, in 2017, riots started in February very badly because people really got so tired of the system. There was no food. You had to go on very long lines for toilet paper. You know, it's very painful to say those things, but it, it's the truth. And there was this beautiful model Venezuelan and uh, she was killed and her husband was killed. The only survivor was their baby daughter and that was a trigger. It was the perfect emotional excuse to go out once more to the streets and protest and see if somebody around the world would turn around and look at us. Uh, so students and professionals and grandparents and parents and everyone turned, you know, out to the streets and uh, we started our fight in the streets, yes. And in and, and that particular day when this happened was like this. There was a, um, a call for everyone to go to a certain square where it, and to donate, to donate um, antibiotics for the injured that couldn't go home because there was this uh, police, which is the militia, that was uh, uh, tailing them, they were after them. So, uh, and, and the students wanted a cardboard so they could write their um, protests on, on paper and on cardboard. So, uh, we went to that square, uh, her father, she went, and myself. After leaving all the things there with the students and with the uh, paramedics there, uh, we decided to buy some ice cream because it was a very hot day that was on the 4th of May. So uh, we went to buy ice cream and her father stayed in the car while we got off the car and we had to cross the street, it was an avenue, to get to the uh, um, store to buy the ice cream. So we looked one way, no cars, we looked the other way, no cars, but we forgot a little detail. This you should never forget in Venezuela. We were wearing a, a hat, a cup, that said, Aust Maduro, Fuera Maduro. And there were some Chavistas, um, like uh, some meters away, 20 meters, 15 meters away from us. We did not see them. We didn't see them. We just saw there's no cars coming. So we start crossing the avenue and all of a sudden this car, which is identified to the Chavistas, this is Chinese cars, only Chavistas have them because it's very difficult to get those cars to buy them. And this car just, it was like, I don't know, like a bolt, very fast driver. And I just, uh, he was seeking for us because the car was going like this. Like, we didn't know what to do because we we're right in the middle of the avenue now. So we couldn't go forward, but we couldn't go backwards because the car was seeking us. So I just turned around and I pushed her off the way. And when I turned around, there was no chance for me because I had the car almost on top of me. So I just 
out of instinct, I put my hand out and dumped on the hood of the car because the car is very low and it was aiming for my knees. If my knees get shattered, there's nothing else to do here. So I just put my hand and jumped on the hood. So I still have this. This is a bump here. It stayed and um, I have some issues with my spine. I had surgery some years back. So it just it was so hard. It was, the hit was so hard. It just flew some meters away and rolled onto the asphalt. And this was completely shattered on my uh, wrist bones. And my foot was, all the skin had come off. And I had a double fracture and some other issues on the foot. Just because we were wearing a hat. Just because of that. We're just getting ice cream, that's all. Uh, that was the first run over like this in Venezuela. After me, oh, after me came many others and with war tanks because that's what they use against the protesters there. War tanks. There's this girl, she was studying medicine and she was run over so badly. She got stuck, her body got stuck under the van that ran her over. All the skin on her head, all, all her, like this, it was off. She's still undergoing surgery to recover her hair and to recover her. She's so beautiful and she's so brave. Venezuelan people are very brave. People think they do nothing. They just take it. You have to be there. You have to live in that regime to understand. What went on into 2017 was very serious. Very, very serious. Many youngsters were killed. Many were injured. So badly injured that they had to wear diapers. And some still do because of spine injuries. Many were left blind because they aim at your eyes with those um, plastic pellets, you know, yeah. with the guns. Pe pedals, I don't know. Pellets, pellets, uh, plastic pellets. They aim at your eyes, so you lose one eye or both, so you don't go out in the streets again. So it's, it's really very, very, very bad there. So that's why I cried. My, 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 my first time here, when we strolled off to a supermarket, not far away from here, um, it was eight o'clock at night, and I was just you know, it was cold. <laughs> it was minus 20 when we arrived, and we're from the tropics, you know, Caribbean, sunshine. Oh my God, it was so cold. I didn't even feel the cold. I was so relieved to walk out in the dark, and no one is hurting you. No one is running after you. I mean, I spent one time 18 hours in a drainage in the streets, you know, in that same year, you know, like this is the, the, the road and they have these openings under the sidewalks. So when it rains hard, the water goes there and all these uh, militia was, were coming at us. I just took this 17 year old boy that was, he, he froze, he got so scared, he froze. We ran under a car waiting for the police, those military, to go away. They wouldn't go away. So I just pushed him under that thing and I w rolled under. And we're just praying it would not rain because if it rains, that's it for you. You travel with the water and that's it for you. 18 hours we were there waiting for all to calm down. Were we violent in the rain? No. <laughs> I was looking for a medicine. Farmatodo is called in that place. Farmatodo is a pharmacy where you can buy many things cheaper. I was just going to the pharmacy. Už tai, ką žyvėlė pasakoja šiame pokalbėje, Venesueloje akimirksnių susidorotų valdžia. Pamirškite tokius interviu.
sako moteris. Nors živeliai ir dabar kalbėti nėra jauku, ji įsitikinusi, kad žmonės turi apie tai netilėti. But it is so violent, you want to live like yesterday, because it's very difficult to live there. Um, economical situation is very, very, very bad. A pensioner can earn a month 0.7 euros, not even one euro, I mean 70 cents. So how can you live on that? That's economical. You cannot find many medicines and the ones you find are very expensive. You can have a piece of bread, what we call campesino, as a, a loaf of bread, and it can cost you two million bolivares. So you can imagine. Um, like I say, it's very beautiful, it's paradise, landscape, and most of the people. Some, some people are very cruel and it's very difficult political wise. Lots of scams, like promising freedom. It's a regime. It's not going to be freedom. Not by ourselves. We cannot achieve it. There's been lots of deaths since uh, uh, 2014. And then 2017 was very bad, so bad that people were left without hope because in the end things got worse. And so everything, you know, goes like, like this. Nothing happens, but underneath everything is wrong. Most people in the world don't even know about this. So um, there is uh, something called Sequestro Express, which is a, a, a form of kidnapping. They call it a, a kidnapping express. They just take you from your car. They take you from the gate of your home. They take you from the streets. They shove you in a car and uh, with a gunpoint very violently. And then they um, just take you uh, places where there's no houses or, or anything. And then they start beating you, asking you for money. And then they start calling your family. Listen, we have your daughter, we have your wife, we have your father, whoever they got to. And you must give us this amount of money in dollars. Not Bolivares. Bolivares are worth nothing. So you can see it's, it's very difficult to live there. It's really, it's impossible. For, for young people, forget it. Yeah. We have no life there. We can do normal stuff that teenagers used to do, like go to a trip or travel or just even walk in the park. We can do that because it's really risky for us. We can do that. It's scary to speak these things because there are these people are everywhere, even here. Not here, here in the Pabegalu Center, but here and in Europe, and you pay a price. But to be quiet, it's even worse. So I take the risk. What about the censorship on uh, social media? Oh, no, no, you couldn't ask these things you're asking me. Oh, no, no, and I couldn't answer them. Oh, forget mm. it. No, no, no. No, because they, we, first, we, we couldn't do this because they, they block the, um, all the information you're given that you can do anything. And if you do it, then they haunt you to eliminate you because, oh, she, she spoke. We can let that happen mm -hmm. so well. Mm -hmm. That's how it is. So, um, look, from uh, 2010, 2011, maybe even a little bit earlier, the government 
started to buy some radio stations. You see? That's, that's what regimes do. They started to buy them. And sometimes the owners had no other alternative but to sell. Because you may say, oh, they're traitors, and how can they, you know, do this? Sometimes they crush you and they break you down so hard that you have no other alternative. And they just sell and leave the country. Venezuelaya pasiliko živilės ir jos dukros Danielas šeima. Jų artimieji neturi lietuviško kraujo, tad negali pabėgti į Lietuvą. Živilė labiausiai ilgėsi savo vyro. Man he calls every day with a broken heart. I cannot tell him we're eating. I have gained like five, six kilos. Oh my god. Ah, oh, what was that? Uh, Koldunai? Grietinė, no, 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 no more for me, look, I'm on a diet. Serious, they put my cheeks, no, no, no. Uh, <laughs> so, in Venezuela it's very hard. We made uh, two meals a day, maybe sometimes once. Yeah, he misses her so much, he misses me so much, because I'm so talkative. <laughs> so, uh, he calls every day, or we get in touch every day, he wants to know how we're getting along and things like that. Mm, my sister, yeah, well, she knows I'm here in Lietuva, and uh, we're, we're trying to get our papers, our documents, because uh, if, if we wouldn't have demonstrated our Lithuanian roots, Like my mother was born in Vilka Vishkis, for example, and my grandma, Mamute, everybody says Machuta, but she's Mamute to us. Uh, she was born in Alitus. Uh, if we hadn't demonstrated that, we wouldn't be here. Because with this very fantastic program, uh, they paid for the uh, plane tickets, and we're staying here until we find our way. And with that, it wouldn't be possible. Many friends we left, and that's very difficult. It's very emotional. Some days you say, hi, Givilla, how are you? I'm so fine. I'm so happy. <laughs> and just tears because we, le we left our pets. So oh, we're very grateful, but emotionally, it's very difficult. And to think, every time you eat, you think about yours. There is suffering. You think that maybe they don't have something to eat today. Maybe they're sick and they don't have the medicine. So it's hard. Seven, eight years, it was, it was bliss. It was fantastic. I used to work with kids. That was paradise for me. And I had that job there. I had another job all, also as a head of department of medical and dentistry in an autom autonomic institute. And it was fantastic. You could go to the beach whenever you wanted to. You could go out with friends to have some beers and wine and, you know, have a party. It was fantastic. And then this huge, you know, shadow came. Živilė ir Danielą yra nepaprastai dėkingos už prieglopstį Lietuvoje, tačiau užmaikštaudamos pabrėžia, kad čia trūksta pietietiško temperamento. Uh, we haven't been out that much, but what I have noticed, for example, is that boys are with boys and girls are with girls. Oh, no, 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 we have to do something about this. In Venezuela, it's so much fun. Everybody is, you know, it's like you see, group. yes, it's like everyone you, goes in in big groups and gets, like, oh, one to hear, yeah. one to hear, uh, always yes. laughing and all that. It's, uh, hey, you want a pop soda? Yeah, let's all go. We'll go. <laughs> you let's go buy bread. Yeah, let's all go. <laughs> and it's so you know, it's it's great. Everybody talks to everyone. There's nothing wrong with it. But here you can see boys. <laughs> girls and sometimes a couple with a baby and a stroller family 
I don't know if it's always been like that. Maybe I should interview you <laughs> to see how things really are here. But um, I think in time, when Lithuania starts to really open to other cultures and other people, things will change somewhat. When you young people, you have to do this, you have to do this, you know, just mix, mix, you know, it's, it's fantastic when you do that. <laughs>